Who are you? Oh. Hi. To myself. <laughs> You're funny. If you are reading it to yourself, you would still have to say to yourself, Who are you? I uh, think you're getting a bit tied up with semantics, Doc. No. If you carefully listen to my voice and relax your mind, Letting all this world relieve its influence on you. Let nothing apart from the abyss of all you are not surrounded, then you will discover and understand. <laughs> Listen to me. I am all things. I am you as we are one. Listen to me. I think you'll find it is you that's getting a little tied up. Maybe there's some issues you have that lay on the door. Issues? Issues? Yeah, well, we all have issues, love. No, I mean really, really deep-seated issues. Listen to me! I am you as we are one! Shall we look at them, then? This is hardly the time or the place to start psychotherapy, now. I'm just about to go into there and have I think experiment. you'll need to be someone who can explain yourself to yourself. I know, why don't you be your own self-appointed guide to your inner selves? A presenter of you, to get to the root of the issue. Yes, a presenter, present yourself. I'm not sure you're fully aware of what you're saying. Oh, I am. Okay, you tell me how I can be this presenter of me. Tell you, let me show you. Idiosyncratic would be one of the first words that springs to mind when describing this humble yet violent excuse for an as yet unknown being. Our story, as you will see, will be held in great affection by many. 
but will be pertinently defining to one irascible, unknown entity. This, rest assured, will not be some outrageous, megacephalic, self-indulgent, ego-inflating portrayal, but profoundly grounded with an imbricated array of characters, a veritable feast of beings, a chunter from the very root of one's consciousness. Which leads one to ponder how inveterate can one be? This portrayal will undoubtedly provide proof of a kind of human isomerism, endlessly involute, and within those parameters I dare say I will find the core influences driving the symptoms which manifests as me in the real. Very good. Now confront yourself. To use such endearing adjectives as apparently, as in apparently there is an inner entity that exists, would be apparently pure ignominy. Cause him, it, if it is, whatever it is, is. Insult, and in turn make me illiberal and factually parsimonious. <laughs> no, no, no. This is far stranger. We have to accept that what apparently is happening to me via this apparent being is plainly, simply, the truth. Ah! Listen to my soliloquy, or founder in your organic delusion. I deny foolish fate. I am you as we are one. Just a little harder to grasp. See, I like the bit about it being the truth. Keep going. So, does this solipsistic exercise have a self-perpetuating effect? My aim to strengthen my own solipsism?
You need to be close enough to feel what it feels. You need to be a stepping stone, a guardian, be the keeper of one's inner self. Like some prison guard of one's id. Another shift then. Suppose that'll be me then. Yeah. God, I love this job. You're not listening to me! Will you listen? Talk about it. It. Well, it's hard, isn't it? I mean, it's always the same. Never wanting to know. By the time that I arrived here, it was already like this. I mean, it's not the sort of thing that you'd expect, is it? You're all the same! All the time! Shut up! Never wanting to know! Frankie! What's the matter with you? Stop things, eh? Constantly. I swear he's just talking himself most of the time. Anyway, uh... To truly be seduced by one's own verbosity, the creator of one's own venerable status, must surely distill the most exquisite verisimilitude. Such reverie and all down, all, all down, all down, down to... I have you now. Look at the state of this jumbling mass manifested particles that try to coerce me. There is no higher consciousness. It'll make me sick. Ah! So, uh, in any case, as I was saying, um, I suppose even before I started this job, I was a sort of uh, caring sort of chap. You know, someone you could rely on. Solid type of geezer. Well, I'm, I'm, I must have been. <laughs> Listen to me! Yeah. And, uh, it seems it must be right. Yeah. Listen to me. Look. I've had enough of this now, so if you don't mind, love, could you just leave me to my own thoughts? I'm just about to go into here. Where are your parents? Look, I don't wish to be rude, but there are times when grown-ups need their own space. 
So if you could just please leave me alone to my own thoughts now, if you could just please go away now and leave me alone. Please. We're nearly there. I mean, I'm a nice guy, aren't I? I don't want a lot of complications in life. I just want to do my job and uh, do it well. And uh, I mean, in regards to... Uh, I freely give my verbose remedy. I am not in need of your verbal toddle. I raise my quota of cause and effect. My panacea will be the overthrowing of you. I am not to be placated. No thing will deliver relief. I am the latent magic frustration. I am born in the fire of frustration. Because this I stoke the fire of perpetual anger. I am the symptom of you. You are the fabric of me. We are all one's inescapable result of one's ambition. No thing can push the boundaries of the universe with pathetic ideas of love. Love's power comes from pain and fear and anger. And I would certainly be the offering. I suppose I just have to go along with it. <laughs> I'm a good guy. Honest. The harmonious injection of contentment, fulfillment, and self-satisfaction comes from John Nixon to me. Your ability to interpret correctly my salient efforts. And what of the delivery? Surely not forced, more prosaic, and above all, blatantly obvious. Now you will listen! One may be so brash as to pity the ambition of this cerebral backwater that within its own indolence has demonstrated expectations way above its standing. I am my cause! For as sure as, um, as, um... My own symptom! Sure as, uh... I reside in the amalgamation of multitudes that coalesce in solid form. Self-ingratiating? My signature defines all that is real. I am the many different beings and will continue to be many more. To suppose, to be cognitive is pouring the nothingness with an ever-decreasing fraction made up of everything that has ever been and becoming everything that will ever be. You see, without the journey you have no distance, and without distance you have no depth, and without depth you are left as a superficial hollow character, and that vibrating energy is your current state of being. So, listen to your id. Mr. Head, will you come in now, please?